This is lesson 8.5, Angles of Elevation and Depression. Your objectives are to solve problems involving angles of elevation and depression and use angles of elevation and depression to find the distance between two objects. Angles of Elevation and Depression Many real-world problems that involve looking up to an object can be described in terms of an angle of elevation, which is the angle between an observer's line of sight and a horizontal line. The angle of elevation starts horizontal and then goes upward. When an observer is looking down, the angle of depression is the angle between the observer's line of sight and a horizontal line. The angle of depression starts when you're looking horizontal and then tip down. When you do story problems that involve angles of elevation or angles of depression, consider the right triangles formed. One measure will be a horizontal measure, another will be vertical, and another will be diagonal. When you put those three together, you get a right triangle, where the horizontal and vertical sides meet is your right angle. Another thing to consider, with the angle of depression, we have two parallel lines cut by a transversal. And alternate interior angles are congruent. So if you consider the angle of depression, which starts horizontal and looks down, is congruent to an angle of elevation that would start horizontal and look up. So an angle of elevation is always the same as the angle of depression. Keep that in mind because sometimes the angle of depression is outside of a triangle. And you need to get an angle that's inside the triangle so you can always make it congruent to the angle of elevation to get the angle inside the triangle. Problems involving angle of elevation and angle of depression, since we have right triangles and we're dealing with side lengths and angle measures, we're going to use trigonometry. Number one, the angle of elevation from point A to the top of a hill is 49 degrees. If point A is 400 feet from the base of the hill, how high is the hill? We'll consider the right triangle. The angle of elevation is going to be the angle that's at the bottom. 400 feet is a horizontal because it goes from that point to the base of the hill. How high is the hill? Height is vertical. So that'll be the vertical side. Identify your sides, opposite, adjacent, and hypotenuse. The side across from my acute angle is opposite. The leg next to it is adjacent. Well, I use sine, cosine, or tangent. Sokotoa. If I'm dealing with opposite and adjacent, that's going to be tangent tangent theta equals opposite over adjacent. Substitute in. Theta is 49 degrees, opposite is x, and adjacent is 400. That's x divided by 400, so let's multiply both sides by 400 to get the x by itself. So 400 times tangent 49 equals x. When you punch that in, x is approximately 460.1 feet. Is that a logical answer? One side is 400 feet, and that side is very close to it in length. 460.1 is a logical answer. Number two, 
Find the angle of elevation of the sun when a 12.5 meter tall telephone pole casts an 18 meter long shadow. Well, I'm looking for the angle of elevation. The telephone pole is vertical, that's my 12.5. The shadow is on the ground, so it's horizontal. So consider those in your triangle. Now identify the sides. The side across from our angle is opposite. The leg next to it is adjacent. Well, I use sine, cosine, or tangent. Remember Sokotoa. Adjacent and opposite use tangent. Tangent theta equals opposite over adjacent. Substitute in. Theta is what I'm looking for, so that'll be my x. Opposite is 12.5, and adjacent is 18. Since I'm looking for the angle measure here, I've got to get rid of tangent. So do the inverse function. x equals arc tangent of the fraction 12.5 over 18. When you're looking for the angle, always do the inverse of the function. When you punch that in, x is approximately 34.8 degrees. Is that a logical answer? Sure, that could be a 34.8 degree angle. Identify the sides. Determine which trig function to use. Substitute in and solve. Number three. A ski run is a thousand yards long with a vertical drop of 208 yards. Find the angle of depression from the top of the ski run to the bottom. Well remember, the angle of depression is congruent to the angle of elevation. And that will give us an angle inside the triangle. Identify the sides as opposite, adjacent, or hypotenuse. The side across from our angle is opposite. The side across from the right angle is the hypotenuse. So will I use sine, cosine, or tangent? Since I have opposite and hypotenuse, I'll use sine. Sine of theta equals opposite over hypotenuse. Substitute in. My angle is x. Opposite is 208. And hypotenuse is 1,000. Since I'm looking for the angle, do the inverse function. x equals the arc sine of 208 over 1,000. When you punch that in, you get approximately 12.0 degrees. Is that a logical answer? Sure, that's a very narrow angle. 12 degrees would work. Number four. From the top of a 120 foot high tower, an air traffic controller observes an airplane on the runway at an angle of depression of 19 degrees. How far from the base of the tower is the airplane? Well, the tower is vertical. The distance from the base of the tower to the airplane is horizontal. And I have an angle of depression, which is congruent to the angle of elevation. So I can get inside the triangle by moving to the angle of elevation. Identify the sides. The side across from our acute angle is the opposite side. And the leg next to the angle is adjacent. Do I use sine, cosine, or tangent? Since I have opposite and adjacent, I'll use tangent. Tangent theta equals opposite over adjacent. Substitute in. Theta is 19 degrees. Opposite is 120. And the adjacent is x. Since x is in the denominator, switch it with the opposite side. x equals 120 divided by tangent 19 degrees. When you punch that in, 
X is approximately 348.5 feet. Is that a logical answer? Well, in this triangle, one side is 120. That's a small angle. So that means that the adjacent side would have to be a lot longer than 120 feet. And 348.5 feet makes sense.